<laughs> You'd think two experienced CIA agents would realize that if they're attached I know. by the stem, I, they'd have difficulty. <laughs> we really get, we, we got it. <laughs> Well, John, it is a pleasure to have you here, but we have in fact invited you here to play a game we're calling Disguise? Sure. But how about those guys? We were thinking, you're an expert at disguise, but what do you know about those guys? Meaning, of course, the Mafia. Answer so two out of three questions correctly, and you'll win our prize for one of our listeners, the voice of their choice in their voicemail. Bill, who is John Mendez playing for? Jillian Edwards of Orlando, Florida. All right, you ready to do this? I am. All right. Here's your first question. John A. Gotti was the son of John J. Gotti, the famous mafia don, but his friends and relatives realized that Junior was not cut out for the family business when he said what? A, quote, wait, you mean dad's not in the sanitation industry? B, quote, let's make him an offer, see if he refuses, and if so, consider our other options. Or C, quote, I love Cracker Barrel, especially the country fried steak. I don't know much about the mafia, but I'm going with C. You're right. Ah. Turns out that the young Mr. Gotti fell in love with Cracker Barrel when he was visiting his father in prison in Illinois, and his various family members said, yeah, no. <laughs> All right. That's one correct. Second question. Mafia guys are known, of course, for their colorful nicknames. Why was Salvatore Vitale, an underboss of the Bonanno family in New York, known as Good Looking Sal? Was it A, before he became a made man, he modeled menswear in the J.C. Penny catalog? B, he once foiled an attempt in his life by spotting his would-be assassin behind him in a mirror. Or C, because he insisted that his underlings call him good-looking Sal. No idea, so I'll guess A. We're gonna guess A. No, he was not a model before he became a made man. He just insisted that everybody call him good-looking Sal. Apparently you didn't say no to good-looking Sal. All right, last question, if you get this. Prosecutors believe that the dumbest mobsters ever were the two sides involved in a 2011 crooked deal in New York in which what happened? A, one side sold cocaine, which was really crushed up sheepdog, to the other gang for money, which turned out to be counterfeit. B, one gang sold a building they didn't own to another gang, which tried to tow it away. Or C, a gunfight broke out when two gangsters showed up at a party wearing exactly the same pinstriped suit. <laughs> They're all so good. Uh, I'm, I'm going with A again. You're going to go with A again? You're right. That's what happened. Um, the guys trying to sell the cocaine wasn't really cocaine. They got money that wasn't really money. 23 men ended up in jail and all the <laughs> dust. Sheet rock dust. Settled. Well, that explains one of my Saturday nights a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, how did Jonna do in our quiz? Jonna got two out of three. That means she is a... Died in the wall winner. Yay! John Mendez is the former chief of disguise for the CIA and the co-author of The Moscow Rules. More information can be found at themasterofdisguise.com. John, or whoever you may really be, thank you so much for being on our show. It was a pleasure to talk to you. This was as fun as I thought it would be. Thank you. Very good to hear. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. When we come back, an actor who plays starring roles in which you never see his face and a woman who travels to places you've never been. We'll be back in a minute with more of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me from NPR. To make 2021 better, we have to learn the lessons of 2020. I've taken a binge watch model. I got the most engagement when I went on deep dives into novels, plays, and other literature. High school teachers on how remote learning schooled them. And why is the U.S. botching its vaccine rollout? Sunday on Weekend Edition from NPR News. Tomorrow at 8, you're on WJCT News 89.9.